Hi, Scott, and welcome to EntrepreneurCast. It's such a great pleasure to have you with us today. I'm delighted to be here. Thank you for inviting me. So, Scott, uh, I know that you travel a lot uh, these days and uh, you also run your business. So tell us a little bit about who are you outside of your business and what do you enjoy doing with your time? Well, what I enjoy doing the most right now is traveling and seeing other uh, countries and experiencing their culture. And uh, for the last uh, 15 or 20 years, I've been a single dad raising uh, two sons. And now they're 24 and 27 and both are out of the house. The youngest one just bought a house in October and uh, moved out and of course he had no furniture so I took all my furniture put it in his house and uh, took one of the beds for my own and said I'll see you later and immediately flew down to Panama and Colombia and spent six weeks there came home for Christmas and then I decided that I wanted to go to Australia but I didn't want to just fly from Vancouver where I live to Australia I decided I wanted to go to uh, London, England and work my way from England to Australia because there's a lot of very interesting land between the two places and uh, of course I looked at it's January and I thought oh I don't want to be in England in January so where could I go and the Canary Islands and Morocco uh, seemed like good places to go so I went down there to Morocco and spent uh, three weeks there and now I'm in Sicily in Italy and just having a great time. So right now, uh, what I enjoy doing is the traveling. And uh, the other thing that I really like doing is learning. I'm constantly learning amazing things about different topics and uh, hiking. I love to, I love the way I really find that I connect with the places I am is to walk. It's very easy to fly all over the place. Uh, but I find that if I can just walk around the neighborhood, uh, I walked all over uh, Rome and it was just absolutely amazing. You know, every time I went around a corner, there was a new statue. You said you've been to London. Are you coming back? Because I am based here. <laughs> we might as well catch up next time. Yes. Yeah, I plan in May when the weather starts getting good to to spend some time in Ireland and England and Scotland. So I'm really hoping that we can... Uh, we can actually meet live and in 3D. Fantastic, let's do that. So Scott, tell us about your business. Uh, what is it that you do and what inspired you to start it in the first place? Well, um, I didn't know I would be doing what I'm doing. And I spent 20 years as a grocery store manager and I managed uh, stores that were very large, had about 300 employees and 20 to 30,000 customer transactions. Uh, and in the 1990s, I started looking around at the people who were about 10 years older than me because, and in my position. And I noticed uh, a very disturbing thing, and that was that they were taking th three to six month mental health leaves and having heart attacks or were quite obese and I'm a firm believer in systems and if you're in a system that produces people that are obese uh, breaking down mentally uh, or having heart attacks it, 10 years from now the chances are that's going to be my result because I didn't think I was any smarter than these people and, and I don't think I am today any smarter than these people except that I got out and, and I don't know if they did or not and at that time, computers were just starting out, like uh, desktop computers. I don't know. I don't know. Laptops were massive things. I think if they existed at all, and um, Windows was like Windows 3.1 or something like that. And when I left, I had an idea that I would do something in the food industry that didn't work out. So I had uh, a number of, uh, I could say, massive failures, but that would be exaggerating it quite a bit. Uh, and then a friend of mine said, you know, Scott, you uh, you know how to manage people, so you had to train them, and you're a good speaker, you were president of the Rotary Club, and the local telephone company has 10,000 employees that need to know how to use Windows on a computer, and uh, you could be a trainer for them. And because I happen to have a friend who's managing that department and looking for trainers, and I told her I would keep an eye out for her. So I went in, and for two years I trained people how to use 
Word and Excel and how to answer emails and all you know how to turn on your computer and all these things. And then uh, a realty company came to me with sort of the same thing and said, "Could you put together a course on for our fifty-something realtors who have no idea how to turn on a computer?" Uh, you know, and and so I did that. And then the realtors said, "Can you make us? Can you make websites? We need a website." I thought, "No, I can't do that." So I spent three months figuring that out, and then uh, I need traffic to my website. So I spent three months figuring that out, and then I need conversions to my website. And I spent three months figuring that out, and the result was uh, this this path just sort of opened up in front of me, uh, much to my surprise, to be quite honest. And then in 2004, I started hearing about this thing called blogging and podcasting. And I did the first podcast in 2005 in the spring. It was terrible. <laughs> people, people told me they burned it onto a CD because there was no phone, right? And they put it into their car radio and he's driving and his wife has got her hand on the knob, knob turning it up when I'm speaking and turning it down when my guest is speaking because the sound was so different between when he and I spoke. And we actually recorded it in the same room, and he was loud, and I was soft, and and I just put it up. So it was really, really a funny first first experience. And then uh, a few years ago, I did a – the people that made the Starbucks app asked me to talk to them about podcasting. So I went in, and I talked to them, and their marketing director afterwards was, was a – he's about a 30-something uh, – Oriental fellow who is so full of energy, like he is just off the charts. When he's quiet, he's bouncing off walls, right? And he comes up to me and he says, Scott, you've got to do a video course on how to podcast. And I says, well, I have a book on how to podcast. No, 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 it has to be a video course. And it was like Moses on Mount Sinai hearing this voice from above, like right? there was no question, right? I was going to do this course. And so I had planned a trip to Machu Picchu, and I thought, well, because I looked at, you know, I've seen lots of video courses, I looked at them, and I thought, you know, they're really pretty boring, because they just sort of stand in front of nothing, and they talk, or they just show their screen, or, or you know, and I thought, I want to be some, I want to do something different. I, I guess that's one of my things, is I, I like to push the envelope a little bit. So I thought, you know, I know my topic. I've been teaching it for 10 years. I know what I'm going to talk about. Why don't I do the introduction with Machu Picchu as my backdrop? And that's what I did. So I had this uh, little iPod and the, the sticky thing, and I walked around Machu Picchu, and whenever I could get a place where there was nobody around, I would say, in this section, we're going to talk about and then I would talk about it. <laughs> and then I made my first course. And now I have over 65 courses I use Udemy.com to do, to uh, distribute my courses, with, and uh, they're not all by me. Most of them are with co-instructors because I found that one of the problems being an entrepreneur who has clients, like I have local clients and I have international clients, uh, is their work is always more important than my work. And so I'll say, okay, I'm going to get my calendar out. I'm going to schedule uh, two hours to do my course on Friday morning, and then... It's nice and sunny, and I think, oh, I should go for a walk and enjoy this good weather. Or they call up and they say, I've got this thing to do. I need it done right now. And it never gets done. I've been trying to finish a course. A trying is probably a bad word. I had started planning and outlining my one course eight months ago, and I have not done any more than that. <laughs> but I've had 20 other courses that I've put out with co-instructors. And the reason I love co-instructors is... It's kind of like our talk today. We just said, when are we going to meet and talk? And you said, this time. I said, that works out okay. So we set this time. We set this day. We're here. Because I would never disappoint you and not show up, you know, without a really, really good reason or just, you know. I mean, it, I do make mistakes. There's times when I don't uh, show up. But typically I do, right? Uh, whereas for myself, because it's you, I will show up. But because it's me... That's, there's all these other things that I'll just sort of let get in the way. So I really work better with co-instructors. I understand that, and and I'm happy with it. So, so that's basically I actually segued into because I love my work, and that uh, that's all part of the of the journey. 
I think that's a very good point. Um, I I have the same thing, and I think a lot of people do that as well. It's like whenever you have to do something for yourself, it's almost like it's not important enough. But then when you say to another person, I'll be there, you kind of put them up and you think, okay, well, I can't let them down. You know, exactly. I have to be there. Um, it's it, it's some of my talks uh, I've been talking about that. It's, you know, if let's say you're a woman or a man or whatever, um, and you walk down the street and you get attacked, um, the chances are very often you won't fight back. But then if you're going with your kids, What's going to happen? Mm. You're going to rip the throat out <laughs> yeah. because, because now you have your kid next to you and you have to protect that little soul. So, you know, I think it's a very similar thing that happens when you, uh, you know, putting other people first instead of putting yourself first. So that's yeah, a great to... example. <clears throat> I, so, love, I love that one. <laughs> Thank you, Scott. So, um, I know you're traveling right now a lot, um, and obviously you have all these brilliant courses you put in ours. I mean, I absolutely love your course. I've taken four courses on podcasting. Wow, oh, sorry. thank First you. <laughs> and uh, your one was the best. Uh, you know, I've tried um, some other people as well, and I thought you, your course was amazing. So uh, you, you're a pretty busy man. Uh, so what would you say your daily routine kind of look like because i assume it's not really a routine right now <laughs> but what your a typical day looks like uh, oh wow well right now i'm on a veranda in a villa in sicily and i'm looking south at the mountains behind uh behind the villa behind me is an uh, is the ocean is the, is the beach and so I get up in the morning, I uh, usually, uh, uh, you know, do the normal things we do when we get up, and then I like to go for a morning walk. And the night before, I have a, a paper calendar, you know, day planner, and I put the main things I want to achieve today on it. And I'm always happy if I can get three ticks out of six. <laughs> and... Uh, uh, then I sit down and I do a little bit of work. I kind of catch up on my email, make sure that there's no emergencies that anybody has, although there almost never is, you know, with with websites. And um, then it just kind of like right now, it just sort of kind of depends. It's uh, where I'm staying and with the friends that I have here. They have like they'll be like, okay, we're gonna go see this ruin or we're gonna go see this town and. And off we go and we do that. And then, so my day is kind of like a, a, an hour or two of, of working, an hour or two of not working, an hour or two of working, an hour or two of not working. And then it just kind of flip flops. And because uh, I really think we don't look after ourselves well enough. So for me, it's get out, stretch, exercise, get the fresh air, walk. And the other thing in our society is, is that we don't ever get away from the stress. You know, so in and, and really just be quiet. And so that's one of the things that I really am enjoying about my travels right now is is that I'm not listening to a radio as I'm walking around. I'm not uh, you know, I'm not talking on my phone as I'm walking around. I'm just kind of being with the ruins or being with the city or being with the people that I'm with. And uh, it's really nice. Uh, outside being outside of North America, my experience is kind of wow these the people that i 'm seeing are not as attached to their phones as the people back home it 's like back home it 's like everyone 's together in a room and they 've got their phone out and they 're looking at their phone and they 're tapping it and here it 's like everyone 's sitting around a table talking and I may not understand the Italian <laughs> very well. But I'm really enjoying the fact that there's just this interaction going around, and uh, and I think we miss that in in North America. Great. Uh, well, th that happens, I think, a lot uh, here in UK. The same thing, um, and uh, especially youngsters, I think that they're so attached now to the phones. Yes. It's like the extension of the hands. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, so, Scott, you know, as entrepreneurs and business owners, uh, we go through a lot of challenges, you know, during our journey. 
what would you say was your greatest challenge uh, and how did you manage to overcome it? Well, what popped into my head when you asked that question was, um, I'm not sure exactly when it was. I think it was around uh, 2006. For whatever reason, I was really unhappy building the websites and and I think I had the wrong clients and also um, I think the, there just sort of comes a point where like why am I doing this? I just I'm just not enjoying it. And um, what I did was I got a job, and it was really a weird job because for me because it was in construction. It was putting siding on a house. And I've never ever done anything like it. I don't have the eye for it. Like I, it was, it, the job I did was actually really poor. <laughs> but I had a friend who who introduced me to a friend of his that did the siding jobs. And I said, well, what's the requirement? And because I just was, I just thought, you know, I just need to get out and do something different for a change, right? And he said, well, you know, to come to work sober on time is our main requirement. <laughs> I said, I can do that. <laughs> So, so, and it wasn't a full time job. It was like you know, I can I can work as many days as I wanted during the week. And so, if something came up and I had to look after my client, then I could, right? And it was an early morning start. You know, like we start at seven and we'd be done at three. So I had a lot of the day to to look after everything. And my business also was not doing well, right? Which is another reason why I was frustrated with it. So I was like, ah, I'm not getting any sales. I'm not have bad customers. I'm not you know, I'm not happy. What do I need to do? And I just, I just need to take a break, right? I'm not going to abandon anybody, but the amount of time I was spending on them wasn't, you know, more than a couple hours a day anyway. So what the heck? And um, so I ended up siding three houses in, it was quite a, a long distance away from where I lived. You know, it was about an hour drive, but it was the most spectacular part of the lower mainland of Vancouver, like BC. It was just, there were these huge massive mountains, there was this big inlet, and we were working on a house that was right on the inlet. So there was trees, it was fresh air, it was out of the city. I loved being there, right? And as, and I'm pounding away, so I'm getting all my frustrations out, right? I just bang, 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 bang. And, uh, after three months, what? I, well, after two months, I said I can only work three days because I actually my business is picking up and I have to look after these clients. And then it was two days, and then it was you know, I'm just too busy. I can't do this anymore. And uh, you know, and he was quite you know he was fine with that. He understood my situation. And uh, but it was really funny. So I think sometimes we get these challenges and we there you can smash through them. But I think sometimes the other alternative is just to like. Take a vacation, you know, and then by that I just mean do something totally different off the wall that you would never think, of. I mean, it would never in a million years have thought I would be pounding walls, hammers, nails into walls, right? And of course, they would all look at the, uh, at the work. I didn't do it alone. I was doing it with somebody else. But, you know, he'd come and he'd look at the siding and the owner would look at the siding and they would both say it's crooked. <laughs> I would look, it looked as straight as it possibly could be to me, right? So I definitely don't have the eye for construction. <laughs> oh, brilliant. So um, would, did you have in your business kind of a really low point, you would say, when you were like, you know, everything seemed to be not really going in the right direction uh, and you just kind of, wasn't sure what to do next. Yeah, when I went and did the construction, that was definitely the case. Um, there was another time when I was doing the training where I I was working as a contractor for two different companies, and they both did training for the telecom. Okay, so I was I had doing my training in Vancouver with one company, and I did training in Victoria with another company. And I didn't have, you know, like if, if someone said to me, Scott, we want you to go to Victoria, uh, the capital of British Columbia, and, and train the telecom people, I was like, sure, be happy to. And um, somebody, well, the, 
somebody in one of the companies found out. Well, actually, the people in the company, one of their employees, knew that I'd trained for one company in one place and another company in the other place, told both companies, like in other words, ratted on me, and both companies called me within a half an hour and said, well, you can't work for us anymore. And it was like, I, I don't understand, you know, there was nothing in my contract that said I was exclusive to anybody. But uh, it was really interesting being in a large corporation, but not an employee of a large corporation, and seeing the large corporation people doing all this political stuff, right? And uh, it really made me appreciate not having to worry about that sort of stuff anymore. Okay, well, let's get on the bright side of things. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> what would you say was your greatest success uh, within your business and life, if you wish? Well, my two sons take uh, take the cake, for sure. Uh, one's a jazz musician, and the other is a heavy duty mechanic. So they're about as far apart as you can be in terms of what they do. And uh, my greatest success. I think um, when I was a grocery manager, I worked in a small town of 13,000 people. And we had those three years there were absolutely amazing because it was a very small store and it performed like a huge superstore. It just did amazing. And uh, the the, and the staff really came together well, and and uh, it was it was just really it had a great I have a great sense of accomplishment in that time because we were like at the end of the world. It was just under the Alaska Panhandle. The road ended, and then if you kept going, you'd come to Japan eventually. So it was really isolated, and it was kind of like the little in the little train that could. You know, it was just like nobody gave us uh, much hope of doing anything, and. Uh, we really accomplished some amazing, uh, some amazing things, and including closing the old store and opening a brand new store. And uh, you, normally, when that happens, they take all the stock from the old store and they send it away. But they said, "You know what? You're so far away. You're just going to have to deal with it." And uh, and we de dealt with it in ways that uh, were really original and and effective. Uh, when it comes to my business now. I'm, I'm really quite proud of the fact that in two years I've put out over 60 courses. And I think that that's uh, a tribute to my co-instructors and also to having a system. And that's what I've done. I put together a system and it really takes very little time for us to put together high quality courses. And that, uh, that really makes me happy and proud and, and happy for the future because it just, if I have a goal of 30 new courses a year, then, um, It'll be amazing to see where we are in five years, right? And and how it's all changed too. Well, no wonder. I mean, I took your course and it was pretty amazing. It helped me a lot with a lot of bits. Thank so, you. So, yeah, <laughs> it, it was a lot of a lot of information, which is great because you have a lot of courses these days when they, they don't give you enough. They don't give enough practical bits. So mm. there is like lots of base, and here there, there were quite a few things. So yeah, uh, how many students do you currently have? Uh, Forty-six thousand. That's a lot of students, <laughs> and and you're really responsive as well, because uh, uh, you know whenever I remember when I posted my comments, you just replied like so fast, and then when we were talking through Facebook, you were just so fast as well. So. That, that's pretty incredible customer service, I would say. <laughs> well, thank you. That's my grocery store manager background because we had to deal with all the customers and all their all their problems when the pork and beans weren't what they wanted, and and I just learned to deal with it fast, and then it's off your plate, and you don't have to. I find if you don't deal with things, they it all piles up. Like we live in such a fast environment, if you just don't look after all these little things. I know some people say do the important things, but all these little things become uh, urgent things. And when they're urgent things, they don't get dealt with very well. And it takes away from everything else. So, you know, a couple times a day I check in on Udemy and 
they fortunately have a little red dot that appears if there's a comment or something and I check it and then I answer it as fast as I can because then it's done and I don't have to have this thing in the back of my head saying, well, you're letting your students down or you're not, you're not giving good service. or uh, And you can then focus, right? Because I don't have that, oh, what am I going to say to that person about that question? Right? It's just, if I don't know the answer, my co-instructor do, I, I, I look after them too. So they never have to, they do go in and check, but they don't have to, right? Like if, if, uh, if I see something, I'll just send them a Skype message or an email and say, here's the question. I don't know. Here's my answer. <laughs> and, uh, you know, tell me if it was a good answer or not. And sometimes they say, yeah, it's a good answer. And sometimes I say, I have no clue what the answer is. And they give it, they, they then go in and give the answer. So I think it's really important that you, uh, you look after the people, particularly, you know, in the in the internet marketing field in general, there's a lot of people who have burned bridges because they they don't look after their customers, like they could care less, right? And uh, I just don't. So I I that makes me angry. So I kind of go a little bit over maybe the, the other way to balance these these people's behaviors. Scott, just you know, just for fun, <laughs> I like okay. to ask find out people, uh, where do you come up with your best ideas? When I'm walking in the woods. So I, I guess you walk in the woods quite a lot. <laughs> <laughs> right now it's it's walking along the beach, but uh, it, it works the same way. <laughs> awesome. So, uh, Scott, uh, you know, during our life we often have a lot of people who inspire us uh, you know and um, do you have such uh, personal heroes or people that inspire you and who are they hmm well Napoleon Hill even though I never met him uh, his book think and grow rich and then the books that he wrote before that the laws of success uh, were very very inspiring for me um, My father was very inspiring for me. I was actually very angry with him for a long time because he was quite successful in business. And, um, and I was like, you know, for years it was like, why don't you tell me how you were so successful in business so I could do that, right? And then I realized he didn't know. It wasn't a conscious thing that he did. And he had been teaching me all along because I was just watching what he was doing, right? And so... Uh, now that he's gone, every t there's often times that I watch my behavior and I go, oh, yeah, like that's that's kind of my dad speaking through in this situation. And a lot of the values that I have in business definitely came from him because there were many times when around the kitchen table he would talk about uh, his work and oftentimes he would say things like, well, the, cause he was in the accounting end of it. He would say things like, the, well, the president said that we want to do this, but he says that's illegal. <laughs> <laughs> so I would tell him that it's illegal and I would have an hour long fight with him until finally I convinced him that he shouldn't do this because we'll all go to jail. And uh, and but nobody else in the organization would stand up to the president. They were all yes men, right? And so, you know, one of the good things and one of the bad things about me is that I'm not often uh, a yes man. <laughs> and sometimes people like to hear it, sometimes they don't. Um Another friend of mine that really inspired me is Dov Barron. And he, well, <laughs> he, he was climbing uh, the side of a waterfall without a rope. And he fell basically seven stories and landed on his head. So that was 20 years ago. And he's still getting surgery and stuff done on his face to, to fix the pain. But he's... Uh, very much a motivational speaker and he, and you know I've known him for 10 years and it's really interesting watching the journey that he goes through because it's you know he he made this horrendous mistake and has been paying for it for the rest of his life and yet and despite and then he's turned it into a positive right it's part of his story and part of what he uses to motivate people you know if you can be you know if I can be successful after landing on my head uh, you know what's your problem and, uh, you know, and, and also, you know, so a lot, you know, we talk a lot and, and he's been really inspiring for me. 
Um, a lot of my Facebook friends are really inspiring. I, I would have to just sort of group them all together because every a lot of times they will share some really personal things that are going on with them that they're struggling with, and then and then you know and you sort of see the beginning of it you know six months ago and then every week or two you notice something and you notice something and then it kind of comes out at the other end and they're and they're good so um i find i find the social media is very inspiring scott you mentioned there uh the two books by napoleon hill uh and i was going to ask you would you say that those were the books that uh, at certain point changed your life? Because a lot of people say that they come at some point across a book that just totally changes their life. Were those the books that did it for you? Or were there other books? Or is it just your favorite books? I would say they're my favorite books. Um, As a Man Thinketh by James Allen is up there. And The Science of Being Rich is up there in terms of that those types of books. The, the 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 change that you're talking about, I know what you mean, and it it didn't there were t- it didn't occur to me more like it wasn't like I read the book and went ah and then things changed and maybe people that have you know maybe there are people that have that story I'm sure but for me there was two incidents that occurred one was between my two sons I had a ba- my wife had a baby girl and unfortunately she was born about 12 well she's born premature and she's born premature to the point where there was no way they could save her they tried and tried and tried and uh, so she was born she lived seven hours we held her and uh, you know it really made me on a deep level probably more of a subconscious level even than a conscious level really really reevaluate my life and where we where we and my wife i think went through this, a similar journey and uh, it was short it was a few years after that that we really decided to uh to leave the grocery industry and do something else uh, you know as a mutual decision and i think that you know, it was really like this uh wake up call in a shock like you know what do you really here's this life it's been cut short you know are you really happy with your life i think those when i look back those probably were the questions that went through but on a very subconscious level it was it was more like this not wanting to do more than what we were doing i think um and then what happened was uh my oldest son was very talented and musically and so we actually got him into acting lessons and modeling and it involved a five hour drive on the weekend from where we lived to where the uh, to, to Vancouver we were went living in Vancouver and the owner of the agency told us about this personal development course it was called uh, Dreamwalk that she had taken and so uh, my wife was excited about it and wanted to go, but unfortunately, the weekend it happened, she had the flu, so I went instead, and she had the flu and looked after the kids. And it was just kind of this experience where it was it felt like I was living in this house, but I was in just one small room of the house, and the, the course just sort of opened a door, and you could peek out and say, wow, look, there's all these other parts of this house that you should explore. and uh, And that's what I've been doing for the last 20 years, I guess. In, in different ways. So those were the two events, I think, that really changed the direction of my life. And sad, you know, it's a sad one, but both of them changed the, our lives for the better, I think. Thank you very much for sharing that, Scott. Really appreciate that. Um, so Scott, obviously, you, you've, you've gone through a lot through, you know, throughout your entrepreneurial journey. Uh, you have had successes, you, you, you had the falls down, and then you picked it back up. You have a lot of wisdom and experience. So out of that journey, uh, would you share with us like your, let's say, top three tips uh, and strategies uh, that you would recommend to any entrepreneur or business owner to make their life more successful? Wow, that's a good question. I think the first one is meditate. And 
and if you're 23 and hyper, that is going to be like pulling teeth, I know. Uh, and don't try and meditate on your own. I would suggest group meditations or classes or do it with other people because the group energy really helps. But I think that we disconnect from ourselves and we disconnect from our spirit. We disconnect from the earth. We disconnect from the air. We disconnect from our breathing. We disconnect from our desires. And the only way that I know that you can reconnect is by being quiet. And uh, there are sayings that God speaks in a whisper. So if you've got all this noise going on, you don't hear. And a lot of the time we're driven by stuff we don't know that we're driven by. And we're, we're driven by a, a, a need and we don't know what it is. And because we fill our lives up with so much noise, we can't, we can't, if it's, if it's a, if our need is to hear a bird singing, we've got these earplugs on, we've got rock and roll blasting, we can never hear the bird. And we're searching for the bird singing. And, and the only way I know that you can do that is by being quiet. Now, some people would say it's prayer. You know, you go to church and you pray quietly. That's a form of meditation, in my opinion. Or you get a, a CD or a, a MP3 and you, you know, play bionic beats or something. And that can be, or you just sit in a monk's monastery somewhere and ohm. Like, you know, whatever it is doesn't really matter. I think the, it, it can even be like walking in the woods. You can have, you know, moving meditations. Some people, when they work out, they get into a meditative state. Uh, you know, there's lots of different ways to do it. But I think that what we're really missing in our world is is peace. And I think that's pretty obvious. And it starts with peace in ourselves. And I think that through meditation, that happens. Through meditation, which is, you know, maybe I should use a different word. Through being quiet and listening to your inner selves as much as the outer selves, uh, you know, you'll hear things about, like, that's really a bad business partner you're thinking about working with. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. You know, little guys on your shoulder, they've been trying to tell you lots of things and you, we don't listen to them, right? And so, well, the last three business partners I had were really bad. Yeah, that's because you're, you know, you're doing the same thing because you haven't reflected on what happened. You haven't integrated what's happened. You haven't got rid of the subconscious self-sabotaging behaviors and, and needs and wants that cause you to always glom on to the wrong business partners. And I've done that. I've had really bad business partners. And and oh, and then and, and if you really look at them, you know, like if you have three bad business partners, even not even if they're in a row, they're all the same person, just different skin, right? Same issues. So so that would be like number one is be quiet. Uh, number two is one or two times a year when you're quiet, have a goal of writing down what it is that you want. So every January or December, I write down at the end of my book, like for next December, a whole list of things that I want to accomplish. And then I forget about them. And then it comes to December and I say, oh, there's this list. And I start checking off and usually 70% of it's done. And 50% of the 70% were done effortlessly. In other words, it was a goal that I had. And wow, I actually did that. But I didn't actually like spend time and force it or anything. It just it came, came. And I think that's the other part is we sometimes struggle with life when we can just, it, it's, it's like swimming upstream, you know, you don't actually want to go upstream, you want to go downstream, but you don't know and you're going upstream and you're swimming and you're not getting anywhere because the water is going fast, as fast as you're swimming, so you're basically not moving and you're wondering why you're stuck. It's because you're going the wrong way. And I really like uh, an old song that was... Uh, oh, now I'm going to forget it. Uh, merrily, merrily, merrily. Like, oh, well. It's... Uh, when it comes to me, I'll, I'll say it to you, but it, but it basically talks about, uh, you know, go with the flow. And I think sometimes we try to go against the flow. And the third thing would be to surround yourself with people that are smarter, better, 
stronger than yourself. The big mistake I noticed in uh, the organizations that I was in was the boss always liked to have people who were dumber than him around him because then he looked smart. Yeah, but it didn't do any good for the company. And it doesn't do any good for you as a as an entrepreneur, as a solo entrepreneur, as a small business, to surround yourself with people that aren't very bright. And uh, it's hard to let go of that and say, you know what, this person is way better at this than I am. Uh, the first, my course, my video course, my first one, of course, I edited the video myself because that's my course. I'm, just, I didn't, you know. And then I talked to a bunch of my clients about it, and they all got excited, and they all wanted video courses too. So we created the video courses, and I had five that I had to edit. And I was becoming very, very obvious that if I was going to do the editing, it would take three or four years for these courses to be completed. So I found a video editor. I turned it over to her. And in the beginning, it was like, oh, this is going to be a catastrophe. I know it's going to be a catastrophe. And then I got the first video course back from her. And it was like three times better than anything I would even think of doing, let alone could do. And she's continued that for two years now. And it is so wonderful because it's hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of work that I don't have to do. <laughs> so I do my thing and then I get the video and I just ship it off to her. And a week later or two weeks later, she says, all done, Scott, uploaded it for you. We review it. There's the odd, you know, spelling mistake or something that she make, make, might make, right? Because she's not, not perfect, just like I'm not, which is no problem. And it's just like, what a relief. So find people that are better than you and mastermind with them, work with them, JV with them, talk with them, whatever, and contribute to them and let them contribute to you. Scott, you know, th throughout your journey, uh, did you come across any specific resources that you could share with us that made your life easier? Wow, specific. Google. <laughs> That's not a surprise. How do you do this? Google. Uh, hmm. Specific resources. I can't. The specific resources that I would give you don't exist anymore, to be quite honest. I would say read Think and Grow Rich every year. I would think as uh, think uh, as a man thinketh every year or two. They're fast reads, and uh, what I would recommend actually is have it by your night table and spend 15 minutes reading uh, before you go to bed. And you'll be far better off reading that for 15 minutes than watching the news for an hour. Um, I would, I, I would, uh, what comes to mind is something like Tony Robbins, you know, walking on fire. Like I would go and do something that's impossible. I walked on fire four times. The fourth time was actually impossible because the third time I said to my body, that's the last time we're going to do this. And then I went to an event, and in the event, of course, they say, we want everybody to uh, you know, make a commitment that they're going to play full out, and they're going to do everything and do all the exercises. Who agrees? Yes, I agree. Well, we're going to do a fire walk. Oh, <laughs> I already said to myself, I'm not going to do one, right? So I... He spent an hour explaining to 300 people how to do the fire walk. I spent an hour talking to my inner child and my body saying, you know, I know we said we weren't going to, but we're here. And I would really like to not break this commitment and do it. And I could feel my little, you know, I, I don't really want to. Though I know we don't really want to, but we got, you know. And at the end of the hour, it was like, okay, we're all in agreement. You have to be in alignment. And we walked on a 60-foot fire walk. And I know my, my feet would have burned out if because I was conflicted, right? I'd already said I wasn't going to. So I needed to get that conflict out of the way. But I think, you know, find something that you're afraid of doing or that's outside your comfort zone or 
that you would love to do that you didn't. Like the last two years I've been, or three years, I've been taking salsa dancing lessons and bachata. And I, my background is <clears throat> Scottish and Germanic, so it's umpapa, umpapa. You know, I can do the butterfly and the polka and everything else, no problem, because I'm in that beat, like genetically, I think, you know, or growing up. And the salsa beat is one, two, three, stop, one, two, three, stop. Like it's, and it just, it took me so much time just to even get the, the beat right, forget about the steps. And it was a lot of fun, but it opened up all sorts of different parts of my brain because this is dancing and this is dancing with a partner and how do you lead and I mean it was it was it was a wonderful experience so you know I really think it's important like the resource I would give you is what is something that you either love to do but you don't have time to and you haven't or what is something that you know you think ah, I don't I don't want to do that and go do that uh, or I'm really terrified of doing it uh, but no it's not dangerous and go do that uh, and stretch yourself out and it's just amazing particularly if you can do it in a group like I love dance lessons because usually you go from partner to partner to partner to partner to partner so you have this experience of dancing with different people and meeting different people and getting to know different people who are really different than your group like I have this internet marketing group and if you just stick in here like you miss out it's like eating hamburger every day like you know there's there's pizza and lasagna and steak and turkey dinners and corn and you know vegetables and fruit and all these other things, right? And I think sometimes we have too limited a palate. So Scott, um, you obviously, you know, you're doing pretty well for yourself. You travel in the world. You have all this. 43,000 students <laughs> to look after and um, you know, qu quite a successful entrepreneur. But what is next for you? What's your next goal or dream? What are you planning to achieve next? Well, I'm right now, I'm just focused on um, going from country to country to country and spending, you know, two or three weeks in, I'm not obviously not going to be in every one but uh, two or three weeks and, and exploring them and exploring their culture and, uh, and kind of continue. And that's really the, the, the focus and the dream. And then I think when that journey is over, which could be two years, three years, four years, five years from now, uh, my mom, my father has passed away and my mom is going to be in her late 80s. And I think what I'll probably do then is settle down for a few years and make sure that she doesn't have to go into a home. She can stay in the home that she's been for the last 30 years and, and live out her life in uh, peace and safety. So the, the money looks after itself when you look after yourself, is my opinion, right? Like it's not, they're, they're, uh, I don't have any goals where it's, oh, I'm going to make a million dollars or anything like that. In fact, it's, it's almost the opposite of, you know, I want to live the life that I want to live. And when I know what that life is, uh, the opportunities come that allow me to, con to continue. And I think the reason for that is because the seeds have been planted for years and years and years. So when you're 20 years old, you haven't planted very many seeds. When you're 60 years old, you've planted a lot of seeds. And that's just what happens, particularly if you work on having you know, one of the Dale Carnegie things is pleasing personality. I think Napoleon Hill talks about it as well. So people like you and they like to help you out and they keep you in mind. And to give you an example, a friend of mine that I've known for about eight, nine years now contacted me last week about courses. So he's been paying attention to what I've been doing and, and we've chatted the odd time over the last few years. And he said, Scott, I want you to do some courses with a client of mine and when you do these courses, they're going to be on mortgages and real estate. And we think that the 40,000 employees will all use the videos to uh, prospect with their potential customers. So in other words, I could double my students in six months. <laughs> 
months. So it's like, oh, great, right? Well, you know, I wasn't hammering this guy to, you know, find me a guy that can double my students in the next six months. It just came, right? Because I'd been doing what I want to do and I'd been following my path as it's been laid out before me. And uh, well, there were many times with this particular individual, I could have burned the bridge, you know, like I just didn't like the way he behaved and, or it, it was, I mean, his heart's in the right place. Don't get me wrong that way. You know, he's ethical and everything else, but it was, it was just like, ah, oh, this guy's, and I didn't because I, I looked at the parts of him that were wonderful and, and that's what I focused on. And the parts of him that aren't wonderful are really small anyway. And uh, and it just came around to like, wow, this is a great opportunity. And it may happen, it may not happen. That's not the point. The point is, is there's some there, you know seeds that are coming up, and you never know what they are or where they when they're going to come. So live the life that you want, and and let everything else look after itself. Scott, we're getting a bit pressed on time, uh, and uh, you know it's it's been an incredible. Uh, chat with you really enjoyed it but thank you if, if we, before we say our goodbyes is there any, anything else you would like to add or advise on to the listener today i think there's a great opportunity in podcasting and i think that uh, there's very little competition if you're thinking of doing any sort of online business uh, podcasting is definitely one of the quickest and easiest ways to position yourself as an expert in your field uh, to to um, to kind of get your message out there. We talked about the you know it's a crowded marketplace. There's all this noise going on, but there's not as much noise in podcasting as there are on say websites. You know, do a search on weight loss, and there's a billion websites that pop up. But there's only a couple thousand uh, weight loss podcasts that pop up, which means that uh with all new cars they are able to access podcasting now which means that every time anyone's on the road they could be listening to your podcast very easily and they're not going to be reading or you know watching youtube or reading on a uh a website so i really would suggest that you uh, you take a look at that because it's a it's an untapped area where there are hundreds of million uh people that are desperate for information that aren't being served. Thank you. Scott, what's the best way to find you or anyone who wants to reach out? Uh, let's see. The best way to find me would be www.powerpodcasters.com and uh, my email is scott at patton, P-A-T-O-N, mail, M-A-I-L.com if you want to send me a message. and. Uh, you know, usually email is the best way to get a hold of me. And as long as your email doesn't go into my spam filter, uh, it'll be good. Fabulous. I'll leave all those details out so that uh, anyone who wants to contact you can contact you. Thank, Thank you, you so very much for coming on the show today. Uh, and enjoy the rest of the stay in Italy and the rest of your trip. Hopefully see you soon in London. Yes, that would be... That would be very, very exciting. Thanks for having me.